Hi, welcome to Premium Builds, I'm John. In this video, we're gonna explore the integrated graphics on Intel's new Rocket Lake CPUs, the i5-11500, and I've done a little bit of work with the i9-11900K as well. We're really seeking to answer the question, can you actually game on these chips given the lack of availability of GPUs at the moment? So I've fired up the system you can see behind me, which is a very simple system, no GPU, and I've tested it with a variety of games to see what works and what doesn't. And hopefully that will help you make the decision as to whether a chip like this and a setup like this could help you build a PC right now that will get you going and get you gaming without the need to hunt for down a GPU or overpay for one. Over at Premium Builds, we've got a host of build guides for you to follow. We have component reviews, product roundups, and build advice to assist you in choosing parts for your PC. We've also got a build database listing parts for any price point or need. Please take a look and use our knowledge and research to help you get the best for your money, including PCs you can build right now to play AAA titles without a GPU. Intel made some bold claims about the Iris XE architecture that features on these new chips. Our expectations of what an integrated graphics processor could really do changed with AMD and their release of the 2200G and the 2400G a couple of years ago, and they followed that up with the 3200G and 3400G as well. Those are all four core parts, and they're not particularly strong CPUs, but they do allow you to game in 3D on the integrated Vega graphics cores, which was an impressive achievement. AMD now have the 4650G and the 4750G, which are Zen 2 parts, 6 and 8 cores respectively, with integrated Vega graphics, and they too are actually capable of basic 3D gaming and uh, really quite good performance given the cost of them. Unfortunately, they're OEM only. You have to go through grey market resellers to obtain them, and um, they're not that easy to find. Therefore, what I wanted to do was look at the i5-11500 in particular, which has the UHD 750 graphics processor, the slightly more um, powerful version, and see what its performance was like in games. To test this, I set up the system you can see behind me. It's simply an Intel i5-11500 CPU, a B560M motherboard, 16 gigabytes of 3600 MHz CL16 RAM, because RAM speed is important when you're using it as both VRAM and system RAM. Higher bandwidth can aid performance, therefore it is sensible to get slightly faster RAM for a system like this. I also tested the i9-11900K, which has exactly the same iGPU, the Intel UHD 750, but is a slightly more powerful processor. And I wanted to see if there was any performance benefit from going to that more powerful chip, or if they performed much the same. The results I've got for you are more qualitative than quantitative in this case. It's not really worth comparing these iGPUs to any discrete graphics card. The performance just isn't comparable. The question I was seeking to answer was really, can you game reasonably on these CPUs? So that's what I set about testing. Starting out with the normal suite of games we test, no Vulcan title would run, ruling out Doom Eternal and Red Dead Redemption 2, and it also wouldn't complete the Time Spy benchmark. Moving on to things that would run, it completed the Fire Strike benchmark, with a score so low as to be meaningless, around 2,500 points in the graphics test, and it also ran Rainbow Six Siege, scoring an average of 40 FPS at 1080p in the lowest settings. That's not really going to be a playable or competitive experience. It also completed the Shadow of the Tomb Raider benchmark at 720p lowest settings and scoring 30 frames per second average. Whilst 12-year-old me would probably play this, it's not really acceptable as a gaming experience. Impressively, it ran Flight Simulator 2020 on 720p low settings, but it did only achieve around 15 to 20 frames per second. Again, that's not a playable or enjoyable experience, but it is an achievement that the game ran at all and was stable throughout my testing. Moving on then to some titles that were a bit more successful, Civilization 6 and Tropico 5 ran acceptably well at 1080p hitting 60 frames per second in early game, and staying above 30 frames per second in late game and benchmark testing. Again, this is on low settings. Whilst that's not great, it's not going to negatively impact gameplay, and at least these are games that you can run and enjoy at 1080p. Kerbal Space Program had variable results from 20 frames per second looking at the ground, to 50 frames per second looking at the sky. But again, this was playable at 1080p low settings, just. Games that aren't really impacted by the lack of 3D capability played well. RimWorld and FTL Faster Than Light both played normally at 1080p. I did try RimWorld at 1440p and found it to be slightly laggy and stutter. Nevertheless, these popular and time-consuming games are perfectly playable and enjoyable on this chip. Fortnite ran acceptably well, getting 45 to 60 frames per second depending on settings and situation. I found it totally acceptable to play, although competitiveness may suffer from lower frame rates in PvP play. Minecraft actually ran very well with near 100 frames per second at the highest settings, and I had much better performance with the Java version than the Windows demo, so that's worth exploring. So in summary, the graphically more simple titles actually played very well, opening up a broad range of games you can play on this chip. However, if you're looking at more demanding 3D titles, the performance really is going to be a little bit disappointing, unless you're happy to run games at low quality settings and low frame rates, then the chip will work and it will run most things. 
If you don't have high expectations and enjoy the kind of game this chip plays well, strategy games for example, then you'll be perfectly happy. And I'd also recommend it at the moment for a younger gamer, if you're building a PC for a child who's going to play things like Minecraft and Fortnite, it will run those titles acceptably well and they will probably be completely happy that they're just able to play the game. The one thing you can't really do is expect the level of eye candy that any dedicated GPU will bring to demanding 3D titles. This chip, you really do need to lower settings to get any kind of performance out of it. If you are looking to build a system around these processors, I would advise you spend the small amount extra for the i5-11500 over the i5-11400 for example. It has 32 graphics compute units to the UHD 730's 24, so it's a third more powerful and that translates directly into better performance. Any chip with the UHD 750 graphics will perform identically, and I verified this with testing of the i9-11900K. Despite being a more powerful underlying chip, the gaming performance was actually identical because of the iGPU. I'd also recommend that you buy a separate cooler for the chip. The one Intel supply isn't really adequate if you're going to be running the iGPU hard. Something like a $30 to $40 tower cooler is plenty to keep this chip cool and keep noise down as you game on it. You should also ensure that you have reasonably fast RAM and it's critical that you install it in dual channel mode, so a kit of two sticks in the correct slots. I will be doing some further investigation into the effects of RAM speed on our GPU performance on Intel, but because the RAM doubles as VRAM in this configuration, we know that bandwidth is of prime importance. Some reasonably well-priced 3600MHz CL16 RAM is going to be about the best bang for buck. This also means you should uh, use a B560 motherboard because this allows you to overclock RAM even on a locked non-K CPU. The Asus Tough B560M that we used for this testing even allowed us to set gear one mode for memory. That's a one-to-one -one memory controller to a memory clock, which is unusual and it should only be possible on the i7 and i9 variants, but we were able to do it on the i5 as well and verify that. So to round up then, these integrated GPUs aren't really capable of gaming in what we would consider a traditional sense. Demanding 3D titles just aren't going to run or aren't going to run well. But there is a host of things you can do just by having graphics output on the PC. And I've demonstrated some of the games that run well in this video. There's also the intriguing option of services like GeForce Now, and I'll do a further video exploring that. And that does genuinely allow you to play AAA titles on this PC without a GPU installed. So at the moment, with the cost and lack of availability of GPUs, it's quite a compelling solution. And it does mean you could build a system like the one behind me for around $700 or less and get gaming straight away on it without having to dedicate your life to the search for a GPU. I'll explore that in a further video and I'll show you exactly what kind of performance you can expect from a system like this running a service like GeForce Now. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if you found this content useful. Leave us a comment below telling us what you'd like to see. And also please do visit premiumbuilds.com where we've got all kinds of build guides, component reviews and advice to help you build your next PC.